As we develop our multidimensional analysis services solution, there will be several times when we need to think about security. The first security decision we need to make is how we're going to set up impersonation as we're loading data into our analysis services cubes and dimensions. So just as a reminder, this is what our data sourcing looks like. We have a database that is pulling data into a data source view. What kind of credential do we use to read it? Now we might have additional databases and for every one of those databases we'll have to give that consideration as to how are we going to pull data out of those databases. They might be all Microsoft SQL Server, there might be some Oracle, there might be other kinds of data flowing into this data source view and we've got to consider what credentials are used to access it. So let's get started. Impersonation deals with how data sources connect to source data. So we're going to have to make this decision the first time when we create the data source. So let's go ahead and do that. To create a data source in my solution, I go to the Solution Explorer window, right click on the data sources folder, click on new data source. It brings me to a wizard. You can read that. When I click next, I get to this form. So if I had created this exact same data source before, perhaps in another Visual Studio solution, it might actually be here and I could just select it. I haven't done that yet, so I'll click the New button. The provider is important and I need to select from the providers that are installed on my system. And just as a warning, you may have a provider like this one that appears in your list that requires additional software to be installed underneath it. And the Microsoft ODB provider for Oracle is one of those. So just keep that in mind. You, you may be presented options you can't actually use until you do further configuration. We're going to access data from the SQL Server using the OLADB provider for SQL Server. And all I have to specify at this point is the server name, whether I'm using Windows or SQL authentication. And as I enumerate the databases, it will use my credential. So whatever user I am as I'm logged into Windows, I'll select the database, test, yes, that's fine, and then click OK. So what that did was to add that connection into my list of persisted data connections. So I'm implicitly selecting the one I just created. I'll click Next, and here's our impersonation dialog box. So what this dialog box is doing, it's our way of telling analysis services how it should access the data in this data source when it's processing the data. And that's a really important point is that when it's processing the data, not when we're processing the data. So when we deploy this to the database and the database is sent the process command, which it could be sent in an automated job in the middle of the night when we're not even logged into the server, this is the information that analysis services is going to go to to determine how it's going to authenticate against the database to import the data. So our choices are use a specific Windows username and password. This is probably the best choice because it allows us to use an account that has only the access it needs to when it sources that data. Because remember this processing may be happening in the middle of the night when no one else is around. Do we want to use an account that has a lot of privileges or do we want to use one that has only the privileges that it should have? And the answer is the second, only the privileges that it should have. But we have other choices. One is the service account. And what does that mean? Well, the service account is going to be the account that's running analysis services on the server. So if I look at the services control panel for my analysis services MD instance and look at the login as it's NT service backslash MSO lap dollar MD. So this is a kind of built in account. It's probably not one. In fact, I know it's not an account that has any access to the database that is underneath of it. So I could choose this, but in my specific configuration, it wouldn't even work. The next choice is use the credentials of the current user. This choice really doesn't apply to cube processing. So really that's also an invalid choice. The final choice is inherit. And the in inherit means to use whatever has been set up by the administrator in Management Studio for that database. Let me show you exactly where you would do that. You would right click, sorry, you would right click on the database name, click properties, and then if you look at the data source impersonation info, you get a very similar dialog box. So as an administrator of this database, I can set a username and password for processing 
and and then as a developer I can select inherit which means use whatever the administrator has selected for me on this dialog box. This is a great option if the same username and password or, or service account etc is used for all of your data sources in the solution because that way you don't have to fill this dialog box out over and over and over. So I am actually going to use that option and click next. This data source name is going to be called Contoso DW on SQL Server. I'm just being really explicit there. You don't have to put in so much. My deployment's completed, as I can see here, which means that that data source that I've created in the IDE has been pushed out into the server. And I could check that by coming and looking and seeing that it is, in fact, part of the analysis services solution. But since I created that data source with the inherit flag set, that means that I need to consider what credentials are going to be used when the Contoso DW on SQL Server data source is used in the future by the solution. And that inherit property, as we looked at before, means that this security setting is what's going to be used. Now, I think what I really want to do here is not use the service account because the service account has no access to the database. The credentials of the current user really don't apply to processing. So I want to set a username and password to be used to access the underlying data source when the cube is processed. So for this username and password, what I want to use is a special account that only has the access that it needs to because this work is going to be done in the middle of the night by an automated job and I want to keep my least permission on that account as possible. I'm actually going to create an account for it. So I'm going to log on to a domain controller and create an account. I'm going to create a domain account for this, so I'll go into Active Directory, Users and Computers, and in my service account, OU here, I'm going to create a new service user. So this is just going to be called Service Cube Process. Then it needs a password. That creates my user. And I'll add that user here as the default user to use to access data for any data source that chooses the inherit option. Now, of course, any data source could choose something else, but this is going to be my database default. I'll click OK. So now my default is set. And the last thing I need to think about is whether that account has any access to the database. So let's go ahead and grant that because since I just created that account in AD, obviously it doesn't. So I'll connect to my relational instance. To grant access to the account that will be used to process data, I'll go into security logins, create a new login for this service user. And that's a Windows account. And to grant that service account read access to this database, I'll just select the database name. And in this case, data reader would be fine. So this account will be able to read anything in that database. But if a developer accidentally puts a delete statement or truncate table statement into the data source view for some reason that I would never understand, I know that those statements won't work and my data will be safe. So just to recap, we created our data source, and in impersonation, we chose inherit. Inherit means use the defaults in the analysis services database. The defaults in our analysis services database specify that our impersonate account is this one. That account was created in Active Directory over here, added to the relational database as a login, and that login was granted a data reader role on the source database. So we've created an account that can only do exactly what it needs to do for this cube and nothing else.